Hello my beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eva and I am back with a new video. This time we are going to look at the verb to go because it's a very popular, very useful, we all use it all the time and uh, yeah, just let's see it conjugated so we can start using it right away. So as you know, in this series, we conjugate the verb in its past, present, future, but I also add on the conditional subjunctive case and uh, a second type of a past tense. So uh, we have a lot to uncover in this video uh, and we will start by seeing this verb first, the present tense. So you can start using it right away. The infinitive of the verb to go is ish. I know it's <laughs> it's crazy sometimes when you think about it because it has she and chi beside each other and that can make it a little bit hard to pronounce but don't worry take it easy uh, most of the time we conjugate it anyway um, and it's past tense is a little bit easier to pronounce I hope at least so the infinitive each each uh, ish, Sometimes you hear the people uh, when they speak uh, kind of get rid of the chi sound and say ish, which is incorrect. And uh, yeah, I mean, if it's accented too much that you can make it out really easily, then the pronunciation is just incorrect. But we hear native speakers speak like that. But let's try to avoid it because we're learning the language. Um, and yeah. Uh, just try to make it very soft and fast. Of course, when you speak at a pace, uh, the sounds of the letter she and she are not so accented, so uh, you don't have to accentuate them. Okay, so that's how it sounds in the present tense. Ja idem, idem, ide, ide. The M letter is never pronounced when it's at the end, and we just pronounce it as a normal. Eh. So, ja idę, ty idziesz, idziesz, on, ona, ono, idzie, my idziemy, wy idziecie, oni, one, idą, idą. So that was the present tense and now we will move to another tense. The future simple, okay? So the future simple, I like it because it's very handy to uh, know how to form it and we form it basically as you see it here by conjugating future tense, the verb to be and adding the infinitive. So I know that here you might try to practice then the pronunciation of the infinitive, but once you grasp it, it's very handy. Ja, będę iść, będę iść. Ty będziesz iść, będziesz iść. On, ona, ono, będzie iść, będzie iść. My. Będziemy iść. Będziemy iść. Wy będziecie iść. Będziecie iść. Oni, one będą iść. Będą iść. So that was the future simple. Uh, as I said, it's super handy because uh, once you know your future uh, tense of the verb to be, uh, you can form a future, a future tense of any verb, basically, if you know it's infinitive. Um, we, of course, have another future tense, and that's the one we will see right now. This is the future complex. I know it seems a little bit complex, but it has the same idea. Uh, we still use the conjugated verb of to be, uh, in its future tense. So we have ja bende, that stays the same, okay, as we can see here, but the infinitive is no longer infinitive. It is being conjugated in its past tense 
variation, okay? And as always, I have the uh, feminine marked pink and the masculine marked blue and the black uh, is for it form, okay? Third person singular. It follows a pattern. You can compare it with the last uh, verb, the verb to want, I believe it was, uh, where we looked at that. This kind of pattern of hearing the with, dwi, uh, all of that uh, will make more sense with more uh, verbs that you will continue exploring. So focus today on just, you know, learning the verbs so you can actually use them. Uh, and the more you get practice of them, you will make it out, okay? Because they always follow the same pattern. So this one is pronounced like this. Ja bende szedł, if I am a man. Bende szedł. If I am a woman, I will say ja bende szła, szła. So szedł, szła. Ty bendes szedł, ty bendes szła. So as we can see, it's so cool because it just stays the same. Uh, and then we have on będzie szedł, ona będzie szła, ono będzie szło. And then we have my będziemy szli, if we're a group of males or a mixed group. And if we're a group of females, we will say my będziemy szły, wy będziecie szli, wy będziecie Szły. Oni będą szli. One będą szły. So, szli, szły. The important thing you need to remember, of course, is when do we use this future complex instead of this future simple? And that is the answer. One of the most important rules uh, when you must use the future complex, because a lot of times the verbs are interchangeable, is when you create a sentence with two verbs and the second verb is in the infinitive. That's when we must use the future complex. So I have uh, the examples here on the screen and I like the phrase, tomorrow we will go to buy a Christmas tree. So we will go, how does that sound? So tomorrow is jutro, jutro, we will go, Będziemy szli, okay, będziemy szli, to buy, so that's the infinitive, kupić, to buy, kupić, a Christmas tree, hoinkę. So, because here we have the second verb, to buy, in its infinitive form, in this case, kupić, we must use the future complex and not the future simple, okay? But if we would say, tomorrow we will go to... Chicago, we can use the future simple. Jutro będziemy iść do Chicago. It sounds weird because we don't use to go to refer when you're traveling and you would use the travel verb. But anyway, the idea is uh, like this. Second example, will you go to call your mom in a moment? Will you go to call your mom in a moment, okay? Będziesz szła zadzwonić do mamy za chwilę? Będziesz Szła, will you go to call, zadzwonić, to your mom, do mamy in a moment, za chwilę. So that's the main rule you have to remember with future complex. If the second verb goes in infinitive, that's when you use it instead of the future simple. Next verb is the subjunctive. Okay, we have the subjunctive, but it works as a conditional too. We actually refer to it in Polish as a speculative case because we're speculating about something. Uh, and uh, as you can see, it does make uh, a resemblance of the previous versions. You know, we still have the shed. Uh, so shed is the, the past participle we've seen uh, already in the previous verb. And then we add the suffix bim, bim or wish, you know, they kind of change according to a person. But the idea is the same. So that's how, if you know the past participle that you used in the previous verb, you can add those suffix bim, bish, by, byśmy, byli, 
uh, all of that and uh, you can always construct any subjunctive basically because that's the same pattern that the verbs always follow okay so that's great uh, this is the subjunctive as speculative case so when you're speculating about with something that's when you would use it and we pronounce it like this ja szedłbym ja szedłbym 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 szłabym szłabym ty szedłbyś, ty szłabyś, on szedłby, ona szłaby, ono szłoby, my szłybyśmy, my szlibyśmy, wy szłybyście, wy szlibyście, oni szliby, one szłyby. So that's the subjunctive that works as a conditional. Great, we have one version for the two verbs and uh, they always follow a pattern. So the more verbs you'll see, the more sense it will make. And the last verb is this one, which is the past tense. It's a different past, kind of a past tense that we have in Polish. Um, and it's called the non-terminated. Nie dokonane. So uh, basically, it's an action in the past that is not yet finished, okay? It's basically the meaning and that really self-explanatory in terms of when we use it, whenever we refer to a past action uh, that has not been finished, terminated in the past. Here, as you can see, again, we have the same sounds, shed, wush, wush. it's all very similar. Uh, so it's not like a completely different verb. It follows a pattern. Um, and let's pronounce this one. Ja szedłem. If I'm male, if I'm a female, szłam. Ty szedłeś, ty szłaś. On szedł, ona szła. Ono szło. My szliśmy, my szłyśmy. Wy szliście, wy szłyście. Oni szli, one and that's it guys it's another video in this series of having uh, just a conjugated verb without getting too much into the grammar because sometimes we just need a quick reference to a verb when it's already conjugated i hope it will serve you well at your journey of learning the polish language and make sure to check out my instagram follow me there subscribe to the channels and give me a thumb up if you like this video because it helps the youtube algorithm so see you in the next one ciao